Hey guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell here, and welcome to the Go Home Show for TNA against all odds. This, of course, is the TNA 2006 mod or in TW. It's been okay so far. I've been fairly enjoying it. As I say, we're slowly but surely identifying, you know, who's going to be participating in each division and who's going to be in, you know, certain storylines going forward. So it's been a short turnaround since the last pay per view, but as I say, hopefully it gives us a good card for this Sunday's event. And then we can push on with a four week build until Destination X. So, hopefully, as I say, big plans for the X Division then. So, let's kick in with the show. This will also see the debut of some knockouts, so we no longer get the penalty for not having enough females on the show. But here we are. This is TNA Impact Cross the Line. So, we've got 3,586 in the Robarts Arena. We start with an extremely short match, which sees Jeff Jarrett defeat Sharp Boy. And 1 minute 13 by pinfall. This was a D plus 48. It got the show off to a strong start and got the crowd hotter, as always. A 30 performance for Shark Boy with a 51 for Jeff Jarrett. No skill improvements, and the dirt sheet shows us it was just the inconsistency of Jeff Jarrett and the motivation of Shark Boy. So we get a promo from Jeff who just says, What have just done to this loser tonight? Is exactly what I'm going to do to Christian Cage this Sunday at Against All Odds. I'm going to destroy and continue my, my great legacy as the greatest world champion of all time. Good luck surviving your match tonight against the Outlaws, Christian Cage. You're going to need it. So C plus 67, Jeff just has an easy one to start the show. And then, as I say, cuts a promo highlighting his thoughts going into Sunday's championship match. So, again, gets the crowd hotter, continues the storyline which gained some heat, and yeah, good start to the show. Next up, and about they had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, we had Brian Danielson continue his unbeaten run against Austin Aries in 7.51 with a full Nelson suplex. C plus 66, Heyman not suited to his gimmick, of course, as the agent of Danielson, but because his skills are so good in a save, he's already in 71s, and Aries were 46. This leads to Eric Bischoff coming out. It's a good win for Brian Danielson, uh, who alongside his agent Paul Heyman continues to impress. They're interrupted, as I say, by the general manager of TNA, Eric Bischoff. He just says, why, Brian, another great victory. Well done. Oh, hey, Paul. Almost didn't see you there, as he says sarcastically, because of obviously the, the previous rivalry between the former GMs of Raw and SmackDown. Heyman laughs as well, sarcastic. But Bischoff says, we've put a big investment in you, and we're glad to see it's paying off. Now, as you can imagine, a few TNA superstars are looking for a shot at the next big thing, Brian Danielson. So this Sunday, at Against All Odds, I'm going to give you a match against a former X Division champion. This Sunday, at Against All Odds, it will be Brian Danielson, and he will take on Chris Sabin. So D plus 52, as Bischoff announces Danielson and Sabin for this Sunday. Next up, a decent matchup saw AJ Styles defeat Pete Williams in 7.40 by pinfall with a double underhook faceplant. This was a C-56. Overall, again, it's just really keeping the high momentum up with AJ Styles, who had a 62 performance to Pete Williams 35. Matchup's okay, no skill improvements, low morale and inconsistency for Pete because he missed the last pay-per-view. What's it going to be like when he misses against the odds then? We'll see. Next up, we've got a promo from the Samoa Submission Machine, Samoa Joe. He says, since I won this title, I've had nothing, I've done nothing, sorry, but destroy every opponent put in front of me. Week by week, step forward with another man. Week by week, another man fails. I need great competition for this title. And while no man can give me that challenge, this Sunday, I'm going to put the title on the line in a match befitting of the pay-per-view name. I will willingly put my title on the line against all odds, against as many superstars as wish to enter. And I will prove to you all that I'm the single most dominant X Division champion that we will ever see. So C62, and it's going to be an open challenge. Samoa Joe takes on whoever wants to challenge him in the X Division. Next up, and I'm about to have a decent reaction from the crowd, but Subpar Wrestling, Bobby Roode defeats Michael Shane 
in 535 by pinfall. Miss Burke's doing some good work at ringside. A D44. Bobby Roode with a 43 performance, but again, just really putting over Bobby Roode in this instance, keeping him strong. Next up, we've got a short video with Eric Bischoff. He says, Now, I've known for a while that um, the people have been asking for women's wrestling to take a more serious uh, approach in TNA. And you know what? I do like to listen to the people. So, starting tonight, we will see a knockouts division start here in TNA. Here is a lowdown of our first four signees. So, I did get a couple in, um, some you may have seen earlier. But, uh, yeah. Realistic? Probably not. But, as I say, it's a fantasy of mod, effectively. Or, as I say, I don't want to bring in too many people from the outside. But, at the same time, you know, it's a chance to actually take TNA to, to levels they never really got to. So it's an E27, the video plays. First up, we have Kana, a young sensation from Japan with unlimited uh, potential and deadly strikes. We've got ODB, one dirty bitch, has experience and will has a win at all costs mentality. Lisa Moretti, did we all see experience well? This former Ivory fed up with um, WWE's TNA state standards, obviously as it was back then. She had a great run in the right to censor. She'll be a dominant threat. But the big one. Sarah Del Rey, the crowd goes wild because Sarah is going to kill you. So E27, that's the first four we've got. Canna ODB, the former Ivory, Lisa Moretti, and Sarah Del Rey. The problem is here, I did have a look at the ones they obviously signed in real life. I just felt like um, Taylor Wilde, Velvet Sky, Angel Williams, as she would have been at the time. Amazing comms just don't quite have the stats I want at this moment in time, so we'll give them a bit of development. But as I say, we'll kick off the knockouts division a little bit different. No plans at this moment in time for a championship. Uh, so we give them an opportunity, fatal four way matchup here, and it was a poor matchup that saw Sara Del Rey defeat ODB, Lisa Moretti, and Kana in 750 when Sara Del Rey defeated ODB by pinfall. Canada was a weak link, but a D minus 41. Of course, she wouldn't have any overness in the US, so if they filled that one up, she was an exception because her skills looked really good. So, Canada debuts a legit competitor gimmick, which was average. ODB debuts Devil May Care, which is very good. Arrogant villain for Lisa Moretti, which was above average, and a legit competitor. Great rating for the gimmick on Sarah Del Rey. That's pretty, pretty much solid. In terms of performances, 28 for Kana, 37 for ODB, 42 for Lisa Moretti and a 43 for Sarah Del Rey. Of course, uh, Ivory would be a lot more over than these ladies due to her exposure and the attitude error or the end of it, I suppose. But Kana improves performance skills and Sarah Del Rey in technical. And Lisa Moretti, declining physical ability, she'll be putting people over. And uh, ladies were holding back in the storytelling match of the day. We did look to bring in Jacqueline, but she's retiring in three months. So we might just bring her in, job her for three months, and then she can go again. But it's a shame because obviously she did have a few matches, if I recall, in 2006 TNA um, before she did retire. So let's carry on. Coming event in a decent match. Christopher Daniels defeats Hernandez in 808 by pinfall. The C60 continues the storyline of the formation of the LAX. The match at the crowd hotter, much better performance from Daniels over Hernandez, a 61 to a 49. Daniels improves performance skills, and yeah, cause, yeah, just cause it's motivational for Hernandez. Overall, good match. Daniels picks up the win, and he heads up the ramp. Well, Daniels, hold up, says Conan. I'm noticing you're getting fluke wins over fluke wins, just like your, your friend AJ Styles. Now, I think we're going to show you and the world that LAX will never lose to some punks like you again. So this Sunday, LAX gets a rematch against you and Styles. And I'm glad to say that LAX took care of AJ Styles in the back. And now we're taking care of you. Daniel slowly backs away from the 2 one assault. But out from the back comes Homicide, who takes him out with a chair and several chair shots. This Sunday, LAX, Conan, Hernandez and Homicide... 3v2, we put an end to your punks. So a D plus 48. Uh, of course, this will be the heel turn of Homicide to turn them to the dark side. Complete success, just so LAX are formed and Homicide developing 
better skill. So a lot of these pe alignments were maybe wrong in the save, so we have to kind of do that at the start. But yeah, that's good. LAX are now fully heal. Our main event was about to have some good heat and decent wrestling, and it saw Christian and Sting defeat the Outlaws in 946 when Christian Cage defeated BG James by pinfall. C minus 56. Best performance was Christian, just below him was Sting, who was off his game. But yeah, skill improvements were none, but it's a decent main event, which, as I say, should get us a decent rating. And when the show, Raven just cut a promo on Sting. So, Sting, enjoy your little victory over the Outlaws tonight. Sunday, you, you go get an opportunity. You wanted revenge for losing to me at Final Real Resolution. Well, unlucky. You don't deserve your chance to face me. You've got to do what everyone else does. Earn it. So, Sunday, you'll be in my playground. No rules. Clockwork of Orange match. But you'll go one on one with Abyss. If you win that, then you'll get a rematch against me. So, looking forward to a good matchup between Abyss and Stinger. But C plus 70 and the Icon V Leader storyline carries on and gains a bit of heat. We end the show with a fairly respectable C61, which increases our popularity in the 11 regions where we broadcast Impact. So, good to see you there. Let's just carry on to the main screen. Let's have a look. Tyson Tom Coast stays with WWE, so we won't be seeing the Christian Coalition anytime soon. Candice Michelle looks like she's going to sign a new contract. Trevor Murdoch is on the rise. Funaki's gone. Can we, should we bring in Funaki? Funaki number one. It's actually quite tempting for the X Division. Because he's going to have a good experience, decent overness. Does the basics. I might look into that. So we could look at him. Um, he's not going to be getting a new contract. Al Snow. I think we'll just leave Al Snow. But let's have a look here. It's just the confirmation of the sign of Jacqueline as a say three month deal. Um, we'll just use her to put people over. That's cool. And 0 0.12 TV rating. And Kip James doesn't like Hernandez. Interesting. But as I say, if you go to our main screen here, you'll see against the odds is tonight. So we will go ahead and book that pay per view. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It's deeply appreciated. Let us know what you thought of today's show. If you get any predictions for the pay-per-view, who you think will win between Jeff Jarrett and Christian Cage, Sting and Abyss. Um, try to think what other matches we've got. Samoa Joe, will he be able to defend against maybe one by five guys in the X Division? We've got the three-on-two match of LAX against Daniels and AJ Styles. And yeah, probably more that will get added on the day so cheers for watching guys i say any comments uh, on your own saves as well let us know you're doing if you have got a, a, a really a, an episode or a, a save at this moment in time with this particular mod let us know how you're finding it who you can identify this folk to take your company forward let us know and yeah as always thanks for watching and i'll see you at against the odds next week Bye bye